among us and he is going to speak on the uh, area business plan development as in every phase of life planning is a very important part we all know that similarly if you if you are having an entrepreneurial mindset if you are going to start a startup uh, there is a huge importance of a very proper plan so we are very hopeful to have a very fruitful session so before the session starts i would like to request our honorable the president of institutions innovation council don bosco college of engineering and technology dr ujjal sharma to give uh, his introductory remarks over to ujjal sir uh, thank you uncle sir uh, welcome uh, back all the participants for the second session of uh, impact lecture series and uh, today we are going to have in this second session mr pankaj borua Uh, he will be basically talking about the business plan development so whenever we want to start a successful startup so this is one of the very important topics and um, i hope uh, from the today's uh, this particular talk all the participants will be uh, very much benefited like how to actually we uh, can plan our uh, the business so that we can become successful in the business so now i uh, request once again uh, uncle sir to actually continue with the Uh, introduction about uh, our resource person of this particular session thank you thank you sir for your introductory words now before the session i would like to give a very brief introduction of our today's speaker mr pankaj barua has completed btech in industrial engineering from nit jalandhar after that he has pursued mba in marketing from sibm pune he has worked with shahi exports private limited as senior industrial engineer from 2000 to 2005 after that he had worked in infosys as business analyst retail and logistic business unit from 2007 to 2011 after that from 2012 to 2018 he had worked with forlenco as vice president supply chains and operations his vast exper experience led to an expertise in practicing design thinking method in dynamic and ambiguous projects to achieve continuous progress and realignment Mr Barua has experience of building an organization from startup stage his key focus area were to establish the supply chain setting up product delivery process hiring come development of talent and guiding the organization towards strategic goals he brings with him the experience of client interfacing and the art of liaising between the business and development teams to facilitate build it solutions and products so without any delay i would like to request mr Pankaj Barua to deliver his uh, session. Over to sir, please. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ankur, for the kind introduction, and uh, thank you, Mr. Ujjal, as well. Uh, so today, uh, as the topic is. The topic of the session is uh, business plan development. Uh, Mr. Ankur and Mr. Ujjal has already described why it is so important and why we need to uh, give some importance to it when we are actually starting a business or looking for certain uh, investments or joint ventures in future. So let me start this. Uh, let me first share the screen and talk more about it. As in uh, how we approach the entire process of developing a business plan, how to do it, when to do it. what not to do and what to do all right so i'm going to just trying to share my screen all right sure 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 sir please Yes, your screen is visible, sir. Oh, awesome. So, uh, my name is Pankaj Barua. Uh, so, I'm currently associated with Assam Startup as a uh, resident mentor, uh, based out of Guwahati. Uh, so, beside before uh, joining Assam Startup, I was working for the company called Perlinco. I don't know how many people have heard about it in this part of the country. So, we started in Bangalore in 2011. Perlinco was in the business of furniture rentals. 
furniture and appliances rentals. So when we started it, the market actually did not exist in India. In US and in Europe, to some extent, the market did exist, but in India, it did not exist at all. So we actually went through the entire cycle of, you know, uh, failure, success, failure, success, and, you know, challenges throughout the entire life cycle of the company. So, so that's the beauty of a startup, as in, you know, you are agile, you are flexible, you get to do a lot of things quickly that you want to try. But also what happens is you also faced a lot of success and failures in, in a very short uh, period of time. So I'm, I'm hoping as in, you know, we will see a lot of future entrepreneurs in the uh, in the audience that uh, we have today. All right. So I said, let me start the session. So we, I'm going to cover three topics today. Uh, one is called business model canvas, then the business plan and the pitch deck. All right. So I'm going to tell you briefly about all, all the three points here. So why do we need actually? Why do we need a, a business model canvas or business plan or a pitch deck? So when we're actually starting a business, so uh, all of us come with certain uh, strengths and weaknesses that we have, right? So for example, uh, a few of you might be you know very good technologically, but probably you don't know how to look into the marketing aspect of it or how to you know interact with the customers. And probably some of you might be very good interacting with the customers, but you need some. You need some help uh, understanding how to how the market works, right? So what happens is a business model canvas is or a business plan helps you gather all the thoughts that you have, all the important aspects of the business in one place, so that you also do not lose focus and actually be able to present your company better to an external investor or a third party. So why do we need us? And why do we need uh, this business model, business canvas, right? As in, somebody might say that, okay, we have a product, we are selling it, so why do we actually need it? So, for example, uh, as a startup, as in, you, know, you might start as a bootstrap, as in, you know, with your own money. Uh, I, I think the early session did cover all this, right? The, the struggles of a startup. So, when you're doing that, you have to look for a certain third party external investor, or maybe you have to go to a bank for a loan, or even, for example, there are a lot of uh, the, the government nowadays, as in, especially in Northeast India, is promoting startup culture a lot. So, what is happening is, you know, there's there are a lot of organizations like either it's NRL, NetP, Finer, and all that. They are willing to give you grants or loans or you know they want to invest in your company. But how do they do it? As in, they have to know what you are doing. As in, what your plans are, right? So this, your plan, you what you are doing, your market, right? Those are the those important aspects of your business, right? That gives confidence to the investor, becomes a part of your business plan or business model canvas. All right. Uh, so far, so good. Right, so a business model canvas, right? It is basically a visual model that uh, describes how a company creates and delivers value, right? At the end of the day, a company exists to give value, to add, to create and give value to the customers and the market, all right? So what is the entire process of actually creating value? So let's take an example, right? Uh, okay. Is there anywhere, anybody here as in who has some in, uh, experience in startups? We can take that example. Right. So, okay, so let's talk about, uh, uh, say, a, a tea brand company, all right, a new tree brand, uh, tea brand company who's trying to introduce new kinds of flavors into the market. Hello? Okay, so let's talk about, uh, say, for example, uh, something which is very close to Assam, right? Say a tea, uh, a, a company which is trying to introduce new flavors of tea into the market. All right. So how does it work? Right? So entire process to capture, right? Okay, fine. So where does the material come? What is the raw material that you use, right? Or what is the different about what is the market that exists, right? Are people actually looking for a fla different flavor of tea or is it something else that we are looking at, right? What is the actual need for? What is the need? Is there a need in the market, right? Or how do you actually produce the goods and take it to the market? What are the finances? What is the cost involved, right? How are we going to collect the revenue, right? All these aspects, right? Your, your marketing, production, right? customer communication, even your product packaging, branding, everything, they all become a part of. So all these things, right? how you actually creating value becomes a part of the business model canvas, 
All right, we're going to cover it in detail shortly, but that's the brief of it, right? And the business model canvas is actually the core of a business, right? So if somebody actually wants to do a business plan, I will always tell them to why don't you prepare a business model canvas first and then talk about making the business plan because that gives you a lot of feedback for what has to go into the business plan. And uh, you know, the moment you actually, uh, so next point is the pitch deck, right? So the moment uh, folks here, you know, you pass out from the college and you know you start your own startup, right? And when you actually go and have to make a pitch to an investor, you will need something called a pitch deck, right? So it's a very short visual presentation, right? So one of the key uh, issues, right? Key problems, as in a lot of probably faculty here also faces, right? The people have a very short attention span, right? Even for you know when they're trying to tell somebody, right? Uh, you know. After one hour, as in nobody actually pays attention to what is happening, right? People have a very really short attention span. And the success of you can see it very, as in you can see nowadays, right? Why TikTok a few years earlier or, you know, your Instagram reels or your YouTube shorts are so popular, right? Because people love to gather a lot of information in a very short period of time, right? Some people say that, you know, for a pitch tech, an ideal time is actually three minutes and 49 seconds, as in that's all the attention people have to tell. So pitch deck is basically a PPT presentation. It could be PDF also, where you tell about your company's business model, your products, what is the market you are trying to, uh, you know, uh, capture, or what is the competition you have, you know, what is the revenue model and the cost model, right? And what funds are you seeking, right? So that's a pitch deck, right? So all this competition that happens, right? You probably in future you're going to take part in a lot of these competitions, right? For grants and all, right? They actually expect a pitch deck from you, right? So this is something from a very practical point of view that when you're actually going into the market to seek funds, right? This is something you need to have, right? And obviously, pitch deck doesn't happen automatically. The basis for it is the business canvas model, all right? And finally, the business business plan, right? So what happens is uh, there is a relation between a business canvas model, a business plan, and a pitch deck. So our topic today is actually business plan, but I wanted to cover the other topics as well so that you can get a better understanding the why, how do you actually go and approach to making or developing a business plan, all right? So a business plan actually is a word document, all right? It's, it's a very detailed document. Probably it takes you around weeks and weeks to prepare, where you cover everything in detail, right? When you talk about your marketing, right? You talk about who your customers are, right? You define it very clearly, what age group they are, what kind of behaviors they have, right? When you talk about the product, you talk in details of what, what product it is, where are you manufacturing it, right? How are you manufacturing it? What is the USB that it has, right? Everything in detail. Hello, uh, am I audible? I got yes, sir. Muted. Yes, sir. You are yes, audible. Sir. Yes, sir. All right. So there is a very infamous saying, all right. So Basically, the, the saying is that a business plan is a document that every investor will make you prepare. You are muted, sir, once again. What is that? I don't know why that is happening. Okay. All right, so basically, the saying is that it's a document that every investor will make you prepare. They're not going to read it, right? So when you're going to, uh, uh, for example, even if you're going to a bank for loan, right, they are going to ask you for a business plan that you have, right? Or in certain cases, uh, probably some of you might have experience if you're going to government for a loan or something, right? They ask for something called a DPR, which is a detailed project report, which is kind of a business plan, right? So they ask for all these details and probably they are going to check whenever it is required, okay? so. If something related to marketing comes, so they'll go to the marketing section of the business plan and read it, right? But it is important because everybody, because it captures the actual details of how work, things are happening inside the business, all right? Or is supposed to happen, all right? And it's it takes time, all right? It takes, sometimes it takes, for established company, it takes around weeks or even up to months, right? Depends on how much resources you can devote to making a business plan, all right? So all these three aspects, right? Your business model canvas, business plan, and pitch deck, right? So how do they actually interact? So this is how they talk to each other, all right? 
So you have the business canvas model, business model canvas on the left hand side. All right, so a business model canvas, it's not a very, uh, it's not a very uh, old uh, method of actually looking into business, right? So it was around 2005 or 2006, I think, uh, Alex Wasterwelder, uh, you know, he's a, st a strategy consultant. He thought, okay, fine, let's look at a business, uh, the value creation of a business this way, all right? And it become very popular. And there is another, there are a lot of iterations that happens to this. So there's another iteration called lean canvas model, which is very important for starters. All right. So if time is permitted, I've got another tech. Uh, I'll, I'll, I can show you if there's an interest and if, there is, if the time permits, but uh, we'll, today we'll just cover the basic business model canvas. All right. So business model canvas is basically, you know, when you have to structure the business canvas, uh, business model canvas, it will give you the business plan when you structure it properly with details, right? And when you actually have to seek investments for a business, you present the pitch deck. A pitch deck is basically, it's like a intro session, right, to your business where it generates details, which generates interest. But just on the basis of pitch deck, you're only selected for the next round of meeting with the finance teams and the accounts teams, okay? And then you have to present your business plan and you get the money. That's how you get the investments or the, or the grants, all right? So in a way, a business model canvas is required for the internal working of the company. A pitch deck is required to present to the investors for that initial traction, initial in interest, and then the business plan for actually getting how much grant or how much investment you are going to get. All right. So uh, there's another uh, interesting uh, topic called elevator pitch, right? So for example, uh, uh, you know, tomorrow uh, Gitar is traveling, uh, has gone to some building there, right? On a and he's on an elevator with Elon Musk, right? He has an idea that, okay, fine, I want to start some business, right? But you've got only 30 seconds to 40 seconds, but that's the time when this elevator starts going up and will stop at the destination, right? So elevator pitch is something, basically, it's a one page, sorry, one or two, three liner, where you actually describe the company in short, in brief, which will generate the interest from Elon Musk and he'll say, Gita, I'm very interested in what you're trying to do. Why did you come and meet me tomorrow? All right, so that's called an elevator pitch. In future, people might ask you that, okay, can you send me an elevator pitch? Just prepare a one page document briefly describing what is your business trying to do in short, all right? How it creates value and trying to capture the market. Fair enough? Any questions so far? Any questions from the students? If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask. Please feel free to ask. See, there are no stupid questions. There can only be stupid answers, all right? So I look stupid. You won't look stupid asking questions. So please go ahead. All right, I'll just proceed. So this is a business model canvas, all right? Wait, just, okay. This is a business model canvas. This is, these are the standard nine blocks of a business model canvas, all right? I, uh, moments back, I talked about lean canvas model, so that's slightly different, all right. But uh, we'll we'll touch upon that later. But this is the standard business model canvas, and these are the nine aspects of or nine building blocks of a build, uh, you know, business model canvas. If you look at the three points on the left hand side, the key partners, key activities, key resources, they are basically the infrastructure of the business model, all right. On the right hand side, you will see customer relationship, custom segments and the channels. So they are the customer related aspect or the building blocks, all right? On the bottom, you'll see the cost structure and the revenue stream. They are basically the financial finances related aspect of a business, all right? And in the center, the, the hero of the entire model is the value proposition, all right? So I'm going to touch upon all these nine points, all right? And try to see if I can give an example so that we can understand it better, all right? Uh, if somebody wants to ask something on this or want to note it down, uh, I can wait for some time on this slide. A, a quick question, Gita. So just wanted to uh, make it clear. So our audience is, uh, is our, our engineering grads, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Fantastic.
okay so we'll come to value proposition right so uh, value proposition is basically what is the thing we are providing to the customer right what is the value value we are giving to the customer it is never a, a value proposition is never about that this is a fantastic product that we are giving to the customer it's never that right value proposition when you talk about value proposition is about what is that the customer what is the customer problem that we are trying to solve all right so let's take an example say uh, all of us have uh, used ola service at one point or the other right so ola used to be a startup a few years back right uh, we have seen, uh, you know we have been to ola's office in bangalore we have seen you know how they actually started uh, uh, looking into the uh, or, you know they approached the whole problem solving or you know doing business so when you look at ola right when they started so what were they actually trying to solve right what was the problem there right so problem was there's a user like for example i am i'm stranded so in for example i'm stranded in say the, some street in uh, guwahati right and i want to take a cab to another place so for example i am in say dispur and i want to go to guwahati right but you know what happens is i i hate doing this because i don't want to take a bus all right because it's too crowded there are too many people and i don't like to go in an auto because you know i don't like to haggle they always you know put something they don't go don't go by the meter and all right and i don't know how much should i pay for the trip right so what they did was so they understood the customer problems and what they are trying to do right so so you can say that you know we they can just say we are giving a platform giving an app where you can actually go and book a taxi right this you can say that right but that's not what is happening right those are the solution that came with the value for solving the problem right the app or any, you know the platform was a solution right the problem was something else so that's how you actually go and you know you have to understand what the customer problems were right so what they did was okay fine so customer do doesn't want to haggle so what they did was will have some some kind of standard rates per kilometer and will give a pre quoted ride okay so whenever you go to ola or rapido anywhere right the 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 price or the cost that you have to bear right for the travel is given in advance and it's shown to you right you don't have to haggle right second is you don't have to wait right and you get to book your own taxi right so so those are the problems that were and they try to solve obviously there were more problems but i just trying to keep it simple so that we can understand we can correlate right so basically it's it's not that you know somebody said you know i can book an app where you know so what they could have there are a lot of other taxi services in those days right somebody could have thought that maybe i'll introduce technology for the taxi services a new kind of app, platform or app and they can actually go and you know people can actually go and book taxis right but what ola did was different right they got in taxis which are mobile and which are available at a short notice right so they understood all these problems right because people they you are competing against buses and autos which are readily available right so you had to make the cabs readily available as well right so you You get a lot of these cabs on board through a platform. So that's the value proposition this provided, right? And people accepted it. People loved it, right? And that was the reason why company like uh, Ola succeeded, right? Or a company like Uber succeeded in US, right? Or to a large extent in India also, right? So it's about what value are you giving? So uh, you know, let's take another example. Say a company like. This year of Flipkart or Amazon, the these commerce companies. Sir, imagine going back around say twenty years back. Internet was very slow, right? And we didn't actually think about uh, going, you know, ordering stuff online, right? Regarding the you know the security, whether we'll get the product or not, right? But they they realized that you know those are the concerns that the customer have, and let's try to answer those, right? Rather than saying that you know we are going to deliver product, you know there are, you know you can order products on phone also, right? you get all this uh, telephone channels and all right but what happens was the flexibility that amazon or flipkart gave right that was not there right they, they realized that people want the flexibility they want time to browse so basically they want to go shopping without stepping out of their house or on their on their desktop or mobile now right so that's what they realized and that's what they try to tackle so when the moment you start listening to what actually the customer needs are and the customer want your products are going to be or your solutions are going to be better and more impactful all right so uh, if if you uh, you know when uh, 
talk about uh, you know marketing mix or talk to anybody some marketing strategy you know earlier days it used to be called uh, four p's of marketing product price uh, price uh, uh, place promotion right where the emphasis was on the product and the but nowadays it has changed right we talk about uh, consumers we talk about you know uh, company collaborators right channels rather than uh, you know so basically instead of product we call consumers what the customer consumers want right not what the product we are trying to sell all right so this happens with a uh, so uh, i'm not trying to discourage anybody here right but uh, based on a lot of interaction i had with startups right what happens is they talk about you know they say that i've built a fantastic app and i think it can do wonders to a lot of stuff right or maybe you know it can improve the efficiency of the company or it can do something or they say that we're going to have built a product you know which can uh, say for example improve say some process in a manufacturing plant right so they go with the belief that they made a fantastic product and they and it should sell like hot cake right but it doesn't happen why because you must understand what the consumers actually want right for example the person or the cfo company he's going to ask that your product cost me so much i'm not going to get value for money for the next 10 years so why should i block capital for 10 years by investing in your product right just give you an example so those things happen right? so we need to understand so every time we make a solution so this is the most important point so what is the value proposition that we have for the consumer so they can tilt towards your product or your solution all right let's we'll talk about the uh, customer aspects of the business uh, canvas model right so we need to ask that who are we serving right we touched in the last part as you trying to tackle the problems of a customer as so what customer right so uh, let me give an example of uh, again ola right very simple right so who are the people who are the key customers of ola right so if they go and promote you know can say that okay everybody in say in guwahati should be an ola customer does it make sense right the people who actually own their own vehicles right and probably they you know they prefer to go in their own they probably do car calling or something right it doesn't make sense for them to become ola customers at least at not at, at that point of time right so you need to know that people actually don't own cars right people who have a need to travel from one place to other probably you know office goers or students or or people who are coming new to the city right right especially the travelers right so it makes sense that okay people who are actually traveling for a business visit to a city are very good potential ola customers all right or students or probably you know office goers who just join company and don't have enough money to buy a car or any other vehicle so like they are the customers so you need to understand so you need to start defining you have to go deep down and define who your customers are right so earlier you know uh, most of the customer categorization would happen based on demographics that okay male female age group between you know as a millennial gen generation z generation x generation y and all those things right but now it is you know your market is want to actually do a different kind of a categorization called psychographics as well right based on behavior behavior that you have so a travel company who is promoting adventure travel right who do you think their customers are right right so their customers they can't define it that anybody between the age of 21 or 30 would love to have adventure travel it's not like that right the demographic the psychology would be somebody who is a solo traveler and loves to explore new things in their life right who's you know talking about you know or probably an influencer or somebody like that right? so you go and very clearly define what kind of behavior Your potential customers have the customer segment, right? And it makes sense to do that uh, again, right? Let me get if the population of Guwahati right, today is say 40 lakhs, right, or 50 lakhs, just give a random number, right? It says says 40 lakhs. Right? If you say I'm going to target everybody in Guwahati, and in the advertising you want to spend one rupee to acquire every customer, right, or to reach every customer, right, either through newspapers or some other channel, right? or through digital marketing and everything if you want to reach every customer it will cost you 40 lakhs right but if i define very clearly that i have got only those dedicated 1 lakh people and i'm going to keep getting orders from them right they're going to be my repeat customers then you only have to spend 1 lakh rupees instead of 40 lakh rupees so you have to go down and define who your key customers are all right so for example like we said in case of uh, ola even in farlenko when we started we say that you know people have their own house and their own furniture why should they rent furniture why should they 
sell the furniture to get furniture on rent. It doesn't make sense, right? Practically. So we see the people who are moving into city, like with the, there's a huge IT crowd which moves into Bangalore, right? Every year. We said they are probably our best target customer because they need that basic lifestyle. This has become a basic lifestyle requirement of at least having a bed or you know a, a couch or a recliner. All right. It helps when you, you know, clearly define who your customer segment is. Then another important aspect is uh, your uh, channels, right? So channel is basically how we're going to is the so basically channel comes between value proposition. If you look at the if you remember the, the, the is between customer segment and value proposition. Basically, how does the value proposition reaches the customer, right? So these channels, right? So you know how is it you know first of all how do you communicate with them, right? How are we reaching out to them in terms of you know your, your marketing campaign and all this? How do you, how they are made aware of what your solution is, what your product is? And next point is how do we actually uh, you know deliver the product? So for example, if it is a physical product, you give it, you send it to them through say either through truck, you know your some vehicles or courier service. How do you actually reach out to them, right? Or for example, if it is a service, right? Or if it is for example. If it is some you know movie that you're sending it to them, right? For example, if it is somebody like say Netflix or uh, Amazon Prime, right? So they are delivering products through a platform where you can actually through either through app or the web app, you can go and access the products when you want to buy them or rent them. All right. And obviously, you also use the channels to get feedback from the customers to know that what are the other improvements that we need to do. What are the customer actually saying that you know how do we actually improve our products? So this is quite self symmetry. Um, then we talk about the customer relationship, right? As a what kind of a, uh, obviously, you know, when you get the customers, you know, what kind of relationship do you want to build with them, right? As in how do, first of all, obviously, how do you ensure that they convert, right? Reaching them is one aspect, right? How do they actually convert? So how do you convert them, right? Is it through your personal relationship or is it through some kind of a community, right? Or how do I, how do I, how you're actually trying to build the relationship with the customers, right? And then once you do that, right, the another exercise, important exercise is that you know you want to keep the customers with you for as long as possible, right? So uh, let's give an example as sir, a company like uh, say a uh, uh, pepper fry, right? Uh, I hope everybody heard of pepper fry, right? We, they sell furniture online, so they are doing it, right? So once you, they Say for example, they have taken a bet from you, right? So the the kind of relationship will bet me, you know, you'll develop with them is that okay? They bought the bet, they bought the bet, right? The pot or the bed, which means that I don't need to promote my bet to them again. What I need to promote is probably the living room furniture or the dining room furniture. They probably will need that after buying the bed. Buying is bed is the first necessity for building a home, right? So that's kind of that's the kind of customer relationship you do where you also try to do an upselling or a cross selling. All right. So, so next, uh, you know, the next two building blocks are connected to the uh, your finances of the company, right? So we need to define in the in this blog that how are we generating revenue for the company or for the firm, right? So there are multiple ways. Uh, you know, a company that is selling physical products, they will do it through asset sale, right? Uh, a company, play for example, like uh, Amazon. Prime or even the, your 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 Netflix, right? What they do is they are selling subscription. All right, they are not selling products. They are selling subscription because for the same price you can watch as many movies as you want, right? Or or even YouTube Premium, right? Those are subscription models where you know subscribe to a service and use the products as much as you want. All right, there could be licensing, right? For example, you have developed a patented product and you know you want somebody to actually take it up and you know start uh, catering it to some other part of the country or even in foreign countries you know for example one of the licensing could be the way uh, you know serum the the the, the way your uh, ov shield uh, was developed in india right so say the serum company they didn't have uh, they didn't develop the uh, your uh, vaccine right but they got the license to actually manufacture the product here in India in Pune 
and generate revenue. All of you need to start defining how you're going to generate the revenue here. All right. So again, you need to define what are the key resources required for your business to actually grow. All right. So for example, in certain cases, it could be intellectual property, right? Your technology or something, right? The, how are you doing this? So for example, the intellectual property that SpaceX has right now, right? So when it comes to, I don't know whether they actually have it or not, right? But in a lot of cases, when you have patent for certain products, that's your intellectual property. Mm -hmm. Because nobody else can copy it, right? For example, somebody here tomorrow may, you know, somebody from biotechnology department, they might, you know, invent, you know, something new, some new way, some new product, and they say that okay, I've got, I have patented it, so nobody else can copy it, right? So that's your strength, that's your key resource. In some other cases, it could be, you know, the people, right? If you're in the business of consulting, the more people you have, you know, uh, that's your strength, right? Or for example, mm -hmm. if you have a Say, for example, a help desk or something, probably the human. Or maybe, say, for example, let's talk about something like, uh, say, a football team, right? If you look at a football team as a business, your key resource is actually the football players, right? So that's the human aspect, the human resource for a business. Uh, in certain cases, it could be financial or in, or for a, for anybody, uh, so something which is into production, the physical assets, a factory or the machines, they are the key resources, all right? So it's not that there is only one key resource, there could be multiple key resources, but it's good to highlight them. Then who are your key partners, key suppliers? That's the next building block, right? So it's very important to define who are your suppliers, why, why you know, what are they bringing to the table, right? What what are they doing? You know, for example, if you've got a joint venture with somebody, what is that, what is everybody doing into the, bringing the business? It needs to be defined as part of the key partners building block, all right? Then there are key activities as you know, what is that you are doing, right? For example, if you are selling something that selling is the, so for example, a company like uh, somebody who's in say, tourism and all, right? So your key activity is basically helping your users have a great trip or a great travel, right? If you are, in, your key business is, say for example, uh, for a furniture rental company, the key business is basically delivering products to a customer on rent. So you need to define what are the key activities that you are in, right? It could either be a product, it could be service or a mix of both. And then the cost structure, right? As in defining that, okay, how, what are the important costs of the company, right? So it helps to keep an uh, understand that, okay, fine, what are the cost structure of the company which, which I need to take care of, right? Where I'm spending most costs, whether it is given, and you can actually use this to, Find out if I'm a, if you know you are getting some you know benefit out of it by actually reducing cost or is it creating a negative impact right so basically defining what are the costs associated with your business all right just hold on okay so this all these points actually cover the business model canvas. So if there are any questions, if I just sped to something, right? If somebody has any query, I'll be more than happy to answer. Hello. Students, you may ask any questions if you have any kind of query. Uh, no problem. I'll just go forward. All right. Sure, sir. Sure, sure. Yeah. So this is now. Let's we'll talk about pitch deck, right? So a pitch deck is something you know. Uh, most of you in in the next few years are going to have to make probably make once you become an entrepreneur, right? When you start taking you know making pitches to investors or you want to become part of some incubation center, right? Or some accelerator program. So you'll have to make a pitch deck and an effective pitch deck at that, right? So uh, I, when I start interacting with startups, and this is for me, this is a starting point where I start to understand how much do they understand the business, right? Where they're coming from, where they want to go. So it's basically, you know, a, a presentation. I tell them, okay, don't make a pitch deck which is very long because people don't want to, you know, don't have the attention, right? Probably make a pitch deck of say 10 to 12 slides, uh, you know, telling what the business, what you know, high level business plan of your company, your 
product details, your services, right? Your financials and what is the fund that you're seeking to actually take your company forward, all right? Uh, the essential components of any business, uh, any pitch deck, right? So these are the P11 points that I see. It could change also for some companies. It could be eight or nine points. Or for some companies, it could be even more, right? So obviously, it starts with the introduction. Then we talk about the problem and the opportunity. See, again, it comes from the whole value proposition, right? We need to talk about what is the opportunity market or the problem that you're trying to solve, all right? So, so that builds the story, right? That that connects you to the investor. Okay, these guys are doing trying to solve this problem, all right? And we're going to go from there. All right. Then you talk about the solution that you have, what market you're trying to cover. So traction is basically if you have already started, what kind of traction you are getting, right? Uh, for example, how many customers you have got, or how much revenue you have generated. That's kind of traction, right? Then you talk about the revenue model, right? How are you going to generate revenue? It could be that you know per customer going to charge something like this, right? Or for every service somebody uses, right? So for example, in case of Ola, right? In, you know, for every transaction, I'm going to charge 10% of the total, uh, you know, uh, total fees for the trip, right? That's so what that those things are revenue models. Then you talk about your marketing and sales strategy, as in you know how you're going to reach to the customer, as in are you going to use digital model? Are you going to do something else, right? What is the strategy that you have? How are you going to convert, right? So once you define what your target market is, it becomes very easy to say that I'm going to target these people through this, right? So uh, somebody like, so look at the companies like Whitehead Junior, right? So what the, what is the marketing strategy they have, right? They are using fear psychosis to actually sell their product. But if you do not use our products, your students are going to be left behind. Okay, so it depends what kind of sales strategy you have. Then it's very important to talk about the competition. You it's always good for you to put forward all your points before actually your uh, your audience, the investor coming and asking and handling why you're not talking about the competition and the challenge and the risk involved in your business. So it's always good to talk about the competition. You can always mention that, okay, if somebody is doing better than you, you can always say that those guys are doing better than us. But if given, if provided you give us the funding, you know, we can actually become better than this. So look at the sales pitch you're doing, right? So at the end of the day, a pitch deck is a sales pitch where you actually, it's good to talk about competition. For example, if somebody, look, this investors understand, right? There's some, like, say for example, Sequoia is invested in uh, some, um, some company, right? So if you are another VC, right? And you want to invest in somebody else, it becomes a good point for you that fine. If I invest in some other company, like for example, the soft bank is coming, you know, it can actually, I can help this company, help these guys actually become bigger and better by investing and actually get returns. When you talk about the team that you have, so uh, a note for every you know, future startup here, right? When you talk about the team, you talk about, okay, what what do you bring to the table and all? Obviously, you do that, right? But try to have some, some you know, mentor or advisor in your team because it gives confidence to investors about the team, all right? So always try to have some, senior advisor, some market expert in your expert in your team that helps. All right. And you talk about your financials that you know how you're doing as you know if you're burning cash, how much you're burning, uh, where are you burning? Is it in technology? Is it in marketing? Right? Where, and finally you talk about what is the fund that you need, right? So these are the main key components that you talk about in a pitch deck. All right. Basically it's a sales pitch deck where you're selling the company to a future investor. All right. So these are some tips and tricks, all right, uh, that you need for your uh, pitch deck, right? Sorry, the page is not good. Yeah. So number one is your you need to make the slides very visual, right? So this is a trick I'll tell every student here, as in you know, for your even your, for your class presentations, right? It's good to have the content, right? But if you can add a visual with your content, it actually adds a lot of value. This is a feedback we got over the years, right? So we started in 2011. We are making a lot of unsuccessful pitches till 2014, even later as well, right? And the common feedback was that, you know, it's very boring as in, you know, a lot of text. You are just talking and talking as in. It's good to have some kind of an image which actually people can connect to, right? For example, if you're talking about lifestyle, right, or you're talking about some design, right, it's good to have the image. 
we are talking about furniture and there are no images of furniture what are you talking about right so we need to make the slides a little bit more visual less verbose right and it's not exam where where you get marks for putting extra slides right if there are unnecessary slides or something where you don't want to actually talk about something because you don't know don't put it all right keep it short there is no need to give all the financial details just give the key financial details and when you talk about the funds required in the road map be very clear okay this gives a lot of confidence to your investors all right any any questions on this because i think we have covered covered fish tech I'll, i'll say it again it's okay to ask questions uh, uh, it's there are no stupid questions okay please feel free to ask it so now we'll talk about the main topic for today's session the business plan right so uh, it's, it's uh, as in personally i find it a topic which is very tedious all right because if somebody who has actually business, prepared a business plan right during the uh, these school days or later right it's a lot of effort right it's very tiring but it is worth it as in you know you need to do it so very recently uh, i was helping this startup for a joint venture with some government related organization and they had to do it so you have to very thorough right they they ask every details right what if this what if that right so you have to be very thorough while preparing a business plan all right it has to give so basically a business plan shows what is the road to profitability for a organization or what are they going to achieve in near future with the investments they are going to get all right so these are so there are obviously more elements of a business plan or there could be less also right so i'm just going to cover some of the key elements of a business plan every strategy consultant will have their own points all right i'm just trying to summarize them trying to present some important key points that are very important that you can actually use for your business plan all right so uh, you know before the executive summary you can start with a table of contents as well right that depends on how you want to present it so you'll have an executive summary at the beginning of the business plan then you have talk about your company description right i think uh, a pre previous uh, speaker did talk about what is a private limited company what are the you know is whether it's an llc or something right so you have to talk about your business where it is you know what it is where it is located everything what kind of company it is right uh, then you talk about your products and services what are the products you are offering or if it is a service what kind of service you are offering all right you have to give details right if you are using selling one product under two brands right or you're selling some product to you're giving some product to somebody else like a b2 as a b2b transaction with a different brand you have to mention all the details right that you have then you do a market analysis where you actually talk about your customer segment in details or if you use some kind of a survey to find out how did you actually achieve with that you have to mention those as well then you talk about your management this is very important because this is again you know this is where the confidence Uh, comes whether do you, you the team uh, will perform will be able to perform or not right so it's kind of a mini resume for the team right then you talk about your financial plans your operation plan and then we mention the future road map all right uh, practically a business plan is made on a word document all right a google docs which we want to prefer and uh, it is a very thorough document right it's sometimes it goes up to 20 to 30 pages as well all right so i'm just going to talk about the individual element as you know what to take care of it and how they work and how they what, what is the meaning of what to take care of while preparing all those all right so the first point was executive summary right so uh, this anybody will tell you that this is the most important section of the document right if your executive summary is good right people will be interested to look into the other side right? if your executive summary is boring uh, then you can forget about you know people getting hooked on to reading your uh, business plan all right so you know it's generally it's around 1 to 3 pages all right uh, 
um, that's you know preferably one to one and a half pages is actually an ideal length. But if you want to talk more about you know something different you are doing or you're very you've got something more to cover, you can do that. All right, but even one page exit summary is not really bad. But it's okay to have one and a half pages or up to two pages. All right, but don't go to four or five pages for an executive summary. All right. So what do you talk about in an exit summary? You briefly talk about the company vision mission, right? So I have a question. What is the? Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, so how to manage a expert expert uh, team? How to uh, in with a minimal uh, cost actually? Ah, okay. So that's a very practical question that you asked, right? So yeah. this is what. So what you can do is. Uh, uh, see, this is a very big problem with startups. Obviously, the funding, right? You don't have funds, and how do you actually get in more people to work with you for the limited funds that you have, right? So I'll tell you something about Perlinko, right? So yeah. Perlinko was started by my friend in 2011, uh, Ajit Mohan. He was ex GS, all right. Okay. And he started with some of his own funds. Then I was in Infosys at that time, and he asked me if I'll join. So I quit Infosys. He was my classmate, right? So a close friend. Mm -hmm. So I thought okay, it looked interesting, and I joined him, right? Mm -hmm. And no salary, by the way. <laughs> there was no salary. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. joined him. Okay. It, it was anyway bootstrap, right? Yeah. Okay. So we started with that, and then uh, we are doing most of our classes, right? So we are not taking salary, but we are giving salary to a team. All right. Okay. But yeah. what happened was we tried to manage to get some like-minded people and offered equity. Even I was offered equity, right? So yeah, yeah. sweat equity was good with the with and the the vision that the vision was good enough to know that the company is going to succeed in future. Okay. All right. So basically, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of companies give ESOPs, a lot of companies give equity, right? That's one of the way actually you get in your you know, early stage uh, people to work with you. All right. Okay. So yeah. you need to have that energy in people, right, to work in a startup. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry yeah. to say, but right. But what happens is if somebody is a lot of baggage, right, probably they're not the right fit for the startup. Right? Somebody says that if that doesn't happen, I can't do this. I need say, so much per month to actually work. Right? Then it becomes a baggage for the startup because you're already cash trapped and you're thinking too much about that. So basically, it's very important to get like-minded people who will share the story with you, right? It's the story mm -hmm. of the startup is very important. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to do this, right? And if people resonate with your story, they're connected, they will join you, right? Okay. We used to give our early folks somewhere around 20,000 a month in Bangalore, right? and they did work with us. People who actually were handling sales and other uh, operations for us. Right, 20 to 25,000. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with the promise that you know, if you work hard, we will get the funding. And once you mm -hmm. get the funding, the salaries are going to increase. And that happened. Right. Okay. We yeah. salaries are three or four fold. So, uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you allow me, uh, I want to share something. Uh, right. If, yeah. Uh, so I have a company actually. So okay. uh, it's, a, uh, it's a technology uh, tech company actually. So, so we provide services. So I am managing like, um, uh, so I have given them all freedom to do anything uh, they want. And uh, they have, and giving a salary of 10,000 per month. Uh, and uh, sir, and also I'm, uh, they are doing their work personally. And mm -hmm. uh, I give them when they do my work. So uh, okay. when I, when I uh, give them work to do, they get a percentage from that work. And also a uh, permanent ten thousand salary. So, okay. uh, is that a good idea, sir? Okay, it depends. There's some noise. I couldn't hear you, sir. There's some noise. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, all right. So, these are tactical. Uh, 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 excuse me. Other students, please keep yourself in mute. There are some students who have unmuted themselves. I request all the students to keep themselves in mute. Sorry for the interruptions. Sir. So what happens is this is a very practical problem uh, to handle, right? So how yeah, do you yeah. handle certain problems on the ground, right? So, uh -huh. you know, so 
if i were a consultant i have to ask you right so obviously i have to know a little bit more about what you are doing right but on top uh-huh. of my head if i have to tell you right so one of the ways uh-huh. to do it is what most of the companies do right is basically yeah. profit sharing uh-huh. right you as in you know if you feel that you know equity sharing doesn't make sense right or resource doesn't make sense probably what you can do is you can do profit sharing right yeah for you get, it depends on what stage you are right for you it's also important to get the traction right so basically mm. you keep your margin and try to do a more profit sharing with them which keeps them hooked so basically they also know that you know the more uh, the better yeah. they perform um, actually sir uh, our company is 2 uh, years old and uh, okay. it was a partnership firm uh, firstly uh, okay. means earlierly and uh, now we are going with llp so okay. mm, uh so now uh, it was uh, means there was uh, it is a profitable business and uh, okay. we are making profit but uh, it is somewhat less after uh, giving them a percentage from the profit so okay. that why that why uh, that's why i have asked you the this question so uh, how to increase the profitability no so basically you have to start looking at value right the value that you are offering right so whether mm-hmm. you are a b2c or a b2b that's again another question right? are you a b2b company mm-hmm. or a b2c company b2b company and b2c too sir uh, actually we uh, provide services so uh, we provide services to the uh, b2c like uh, the students and uh, like uh, scholars and all and we also provide like uh, we de- design softwares um, for the small companies uh, small company or are the you, startups so yeah. are you like a, are you like Are you like a company like freelancer or Upwork? Uh, um, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, like that one only. Uh, right. But uh, yeah, uh, like freelancer only. But uh, we are doing it for the up uh, from the start to the finish. We are also doing uh, the digital marketings for them. Mm, so, so basically, what you're doing is you are giving them solution as a something like Upwork or something, right? But you're trying. Yeah, yeah. So what you can do is what I would recommend. you to do so we can connect later also right my email id oh, is given yeah, yeah. you can do that but what also you can do uh, so there's a bit of conflict interest because i'm already working with a startup in the same space we who are competing with upwork like or freelancer okay okay okay, okay. okay. But, yeah. but i can give certain suggestions which there won't be conflict interest right so what mm-hmm. you is that you can look at what is the different what is the different uh, the difference you are bringing to the market right mm-hmm. for example it could in terms of some ready made solutions that you have right or for example yeah. you build for competence on certain areas that this is where we you know we can give you good solution all right uh, so you can uh, you know we work certain uh, certain solutions and probably offer them for a you know better price and what you do is it you offer better timelines than others right okay. you can do some new technology on your platform right project uh, management technologies or you can introduce some kind of a, you know talk about ml and all those things right as in what yeah, you're doing uh, yeah we, we are doing that uh, we are uh, into ml and ai too right and so basically yeah this way you build a platform right it becomes easier for somebody to actually interact with you right for students for example yeah, uh, we some... have our uh, we have our websites and uh, we are into um, software uh, in uh, mobile applications also Right. So probably what you can do is that, uh, as you know, I won't mind just uh, you know uh, interacting with you and you know try to understand and help you better, right? And uh, help yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Right? So we can probably do it. I'll probably uh, you know we can yeah, yeah, yeah. My, get my email ID. We can connect. All right. Yeah. I'd love to help. Yes, thank you. Sir. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, uh, thank you so much for asking. Uh, uh, I will come back to the presentation now for the rest of the uh, audience. So, uh, so this is the most important aspect. Right? You talk about your company vision and mission. You talk about what market needs you are trying to solve or cater to, right? And what is your solution? The solution that you are offering, whether it's a product or a service, right? You talk about your organization structure, right? But in summary, you don't talk about it in detail. You summarize them and present in it, right? So basically, it's like a you know short introduction to your company everything that you do in the company right that's why it's called an executive summary right but this is again you know i can't emphasize more right during our b school days we had to spend one month with one teacher just who make us keep us make making this executive summaries for different companies or different 
you know, some fictional companies or some real company just to prepare us for you know how to make a better exit or something because this is so important. All right. So then you talk about in in one or two pages you talk about your company, right? So basically, you talk about where are you located, right? Where are your headquarters? Where are you? If you've got factories, where are they, right? If you're working in overseas condition, uh, overseas countries also, right? Uh, where are they located? What kind of a company they are, right? You talk about your business, whether it's a service company, product company, right? Uh, how are you registered? What are the businesses you are allowed to be in, right? You talk about your formation. So basically, company history, company details, company structure, all in basic brief, uh, a detailed company description. So probably one or two pages should be enough. So here you're talking about the products and services, right? So it's good to talk about the need you are trying to cater to and the solution that you have, right? So that's probably, and if, for example, if there is some USB that your product has, whether you have patented it right, or nobody else is doing it, probably you are the first of the kind in the world, right? You can do that, all right? So that's the product and services. Uh, that's how you do it, right? But always use the same method. That don't say that this is the product I'm doing. This is the best product. You say this. These are the problems in the market, and that's why we are providing this products and services. All right. Then you uh, do the market analysis. Uh, you know that what is the target market? Which customer segment you are trying? Right. You talk about your. Uh, uh, how we're going to reach to the customers, right? Whether it's through web app or you through actually physical channel, if it is a product, right? How are you going to deliver products, right? If you've got any tie up with some, say for example, it's a physical product, right? Like say for example, a car, right? So a car company or maybe a scooter company, right? Uh, Okinawa, somebody, they can actually tell you that, okay, how are they actually going to reach to the customers and how are the products trans transported, right? To various parts of the country or the market they're catering to, right? Then in the market analysis, you do the competitive analysis, okay, of you know, or the competition analysis. So, uh, you know, it is recommended. Uh, probably you can read up about about this, right? It is recommended that you do either a SWOT or a POTUS five courses analysis of your products or services. All right. The SWOT is simple. It's strength, weakness, opportunity, threat. So basically, look at your business and actually do it for same for a competitor as well. You do what is a SWOT? What are their strengths? What are your strengths? What are their weakness? What are your weakness? Right? What is a threat you could face? You know, for example, if you're not the first mover or you know there are threats from other products or something, right? You talk about those and the opportunity that you see in the market. If there is a something because of say, for example, because of uh, let me give an example, right? For a uh, EV vehicle company, right? Like uh, Ola Motors, right? Or uh, Okinawa, right? Or even the other places that are coming, right? So they can say, because of rising fuel prices, right? I see an opportunity for more and more electric vehicles. Right? So those are opportunities. So you need to be able to see those and mention those. All right. Or you can do a port as five forces also, where you talk about your competition in the market. You talk about uh, the buyers, you know, the, the what the strength of bargaining power of buyers, bargaining power of strength of your suppliers and all those things, right? So you can read about this as you know, just do a quick Google Portis five forces model or in certain cases, right? If it is an EV, right? An EV vehicle or something which is very close to government regulation. For example, if you have something in to do with furniture and all, it's good to do a pestel analysis also. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it in detail. I'm just giving you the names. So you can read about this very simple. Estrus basically it talks about political, economical, and all those things, uh, all those aspects, right? It covers all those. So probably you can do a SWOT, you can do a five forces model, and you can also do a pestle of your organization and your competition to know that where you stand, right? It helps an investor or a bank to understand better where your company is, all right? Then you talk about your team, all right? So this is also very important as in you give proper details as in, you know, about the team so it's like i said it's like a mini resume of your team all right How, you know what is everybody bringing to the table every member of your team right the management team so you don't need to talk about every you just talk about your ceo ceos your uh, vps and svps right you talk about those and what are they bringing to the table all right and it is important because uh, uh, 
at the end of the day, if somebody is putting investing money in a company, they need to know whether the the team is able, would be able to handle it or not. All right. So uh, that's why what happens is, as you know, from our experience, I'll tell you right. Furlinko started a few months before this company called Urban Ladder. All right. And probably a few months after this company called Pepper of Pride. So we're somewhere in between. So those two were in furniture selling and we were in furniture renting. So Urban Ladder, even without selling a single furniture, managed to get a funding of $5 million. All right. So what happened was they actually connected firstly with their alumnus, with their alumni network. And because of double I, double I pedigree, they managed to get it. Because what happens is for an investor, for example, if you are an investor and you are from a double I institute, when I say double I, basically from an IM, right? So you have a confidence that, okay, somebody from IM is there, so probably they can handle, you know, I have confidence that they will be able to do it, right? So if not, so basically you have to tell, that, okay, what are the strengths everybody is bringing, right? Sometimes the experience, sometimes the energy, some... So if you are from the technology background, right, if you have won competitions, right, please feel free to highlight the one certain competitions, right? This is a bragging session to some extent. Feel free to do it, okay, but not too much. Uh, then you talk about the financial plan, right? You have to give every detail to your investors. They need to know how is the company doing, what is the health of the company, right? You, they, you know, you have to give your cash flows, you know, and not not only the present state, you have to give your future projections as well, right? So we used to spend a lot of time on Excel sheets where we start looking, when where we discuss that how is the company going to do in future with funding or without funding, right? So if we get funding like this, this is where we can go. If we do not get funding, where we are going, right? But we go with the we project it, right? We go with the hope that we are going to get the funding. So we say that if we get the funding, these are the numbers we're going to achieve, right? When are we going to get, do a break even, right? So you understand break even when actually the profits exceeds your revenue exceeds exceeds cost, right? When you start actually making money, so when are we going to do a break even, right? So, so this is uh, you know this is when you actually start giving you financial details, the present financial details. But if you want to actually give all the PL statements and all those things, right? You do not do it here. You keep it for a later stage in the appendices, right? Or appendix, you create an annex section and give all these details. For example, some, some investors will ask you for detailed resume of every management team. So you can do it later, all right? So, you know, you can have an appendix section and just put a lot of those documents. And, you know, if you got some license practice, some patent and everything, you can put in the appendix rather than putting as a part of the main business plan, all right? Let's not crowd the main section. Then you talk about the operation plan as in, you know, that, okay, how many supply, uh, sorry, how many manufacturing units you're probably going to add, uh, any new processes that you're going to introduce, right, that you already have, how are you going to introduce, how are we going to increase the capacity, right? Uh, how are you planning to hire more people? Uh, also highlight all the compliance and safety issues regarding your operation plan, all right? If it is, Something to do with service, you talk about that, okay, in terms of service, you're talking about introducing some new CRM software or new tools, right? You need to highlight all those, all right? And then you talk about the future roadmap right, that you're trying to achieve. Right? So basically, you, you can draw a milestone sheet where you say that these are the important landmark, sorry, milestone that we're trying to achieve. When will we break even? When are we going to hit one, let's say, for example, record number of customers right say um, we are going to hit one lakh customers by by this date uh, 10 lakhs by this date right so you need to identify so uh, also define the key metrics that okay in terms of profitability in terms of revenue right in terms of users so when i talk about key metrics is something like you know uh, revenue is a key metrics right so for you know this is you know right now i'm doing 10 lakhs a month so the thing is, the day I hit 50 lakhs, that could be a key milestone in terms of revenue. All right. So this is the future roadmap that you show. It's good to show every detail. All right. How are we going to do it? Uh, and keep it realistic. Okay. Don't go too crazy because uh, they might catch you. All right. It's always bad when the investor comes back and tell you that how are we going to achieve this because this doesn't look possible. Right. 
then what happens is any rework is bad, right? It, it, you lose credibility. So don't try to keep the numbers as realistic as possible. A lot of, I know some starters who say that, oh, no, uh, you know, first year we're going to bring in a revenue of 10 lakhs, next year one crore, the year after the 50 crores. Let's be realistic. Let's see that how we can achieve that, right? There is something called, then if somebody, you know, okay, fine. If somebody like uh, Mr. Ambani or Mr. Adani comes and, you know, puts in hundreds of crores in a company, then it's a different thing. But if to be realistic, that, okay, what is the, what is it that you're actually trying to achieve? All right. Um, so, three things to take care of. All right. Uh, and ex like I said, right, an exhibit summary is very important and uh, it has to cover everything about the company in short, right? So, how do you do that, right? So, first, you have to detail out everything your financial plan, operation plan, marketing strategy. You prepare all those, right? And then you go and prepare the exit summary in the end. In the document, it comes in the beginning, but while preparing, it's always recommended that you do it towards the end, right? Other, what will happen is if you do it in the beginning and later you, you see the certain things are happening, as in your marketing strategy is changing, your Operation study, financial plan, everything is changing. Then again, you have to come back and change the exodus summary. All right. So it's preferable if you do it in the end. All right. And it should be probably one to three pages. Like I say, you can keep an appendix section in the end for important documents, whether it's some license or your financial documents, right? Management resumes, everything. Try to keep a uniform language throughout the document, right? So what happens is, uh, as if, you're, if you students are participating in some B plan competition, what happens or what you do is you ask various members to do one one section, right? And then what happens is the language is not uniform, right? It's not good. It shows lack of professionalism. It's always good. It should it should appear as if the CEO of the company or the founder of company has presented the business plan. So the so it, so the language should be same. It should appear from the language of the founder that okay, what is it trying to he or she is trying to present about the company, all right? When you present the document, this is not for you or not for your company. This is a document for your investors or banks or some other company with whom you want to go on a joint venture with. Right. So understand who the audience is and then prepare the language for them. All right. Prepare the document for them. What are the important things that they need to do? All right. Uh, a business plan, like I said, it takes technically it should take weeks right, to prepare it. Maybe if you're just doing a doing it for a company, you can probably prepare it in two to three days also, right? But take time. It takes time to prepare it, right? A pitch deck probably takes you around one hour to make. A business plan will need days and weeks to prepare, all right? But don't put too many technological jar jargon just for the heck of it. You know, try to keep it simple wherever it is required, all right? And cover the risk. Okay, you need to cover the risk in every section. If there are any risk involved, Please highlight it and be realistic with the presentation or with the business plan preparation. Um, uh, Mr. Akpur, I think that covers that I had for the session. All right. I, I'd be more than happy to answer any queries that the students might have or even somebody else. Thank you, sir. Very well. Like uh, it covers like all the aspects that actually we were expecting of very nicely in a very short span of time. Uh, I can say that you have uh, covered a very, very good amount of uh, concepts and very good amount of things are being covered in a very short amount of time. And you have also given practical examples, uh, telling about like Netflix, uh, OYO, Elon Musk, SpaceX, etc. So, and uh, the importance of these particular three things, business model canvas, business plan, pitch deck, whenever uh, any a budding entrepreneur wishes to step in the field of entrepreneurship. These three concepts are very, very important, like business model canvas, business plan, and then the pitch deck. And what is the differences between these three and like what are the importances are very, very well covered. And the way you have mentioned how to prepare the slides, how to prepare the reports, and then like the way you have explained about the target market, it's like quite impressive and like it's very important because for an entrepreneur to understand the target market is i feel that it's of the uh, prime importance so now i would like to request the students and the viewers uh, like uh, if they have any kind of queries which they would like to interact with uh, 
or resource person kindly come up with your queries. Any doubts, any questions? So, so what happens is, um, uh, Uncle, if I when I'm conduct a session, a classroom session, or maybe in person, right? So I, yes, I'm yes. very interested in actually pointing out people and asking them to ask questions, right? Uh, but exactly, uh, yes. it's not difficult with this e sessions, right? Uh, but uh, isn't yes, yes. But, it, but it's perfectly all right. So it's maybe a very limitation. What happens is maybe they will take some time, as in some folks are going to, you know, budding entrepreneurs, they are going to early read up about this as in it will try to it will try to connect and they might have some questions later so if there are some as sure. in, please feel free to ask me as in i'll be more than happy to answer queries right i forgot i forgot to ask the uh, name of the gentleman who asked me that query about uh, profit right uh, he was rishav i guess uh, so rishav are you there sir i'm here hello yes, yes. yeah my name is rishav rishav shah Chaudhary, sir. Hey, hi, Richard. Okay, so, so, so Richard, as an in, you know, we can connect later and try to understand as in, you know, what uh, challenges you could face or you're facing and we'll try to tackle those. All right. Yeah, sir. thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It would be a great thing. So, so Richard, are you a student or uh, you are? Uh, no, sir. Uh, no, sir. Uh, I was previously working in a college uh, and now I am doing my own uh, startup. Okay. He is a pass yes, out sir. from our, our university itself. He has passed oh. out from electrical engineering and he was the speaker. Today's first speaker was, was Risha Vanli. Oh, hi, Risha. <laughs> yeah, now no, I remember. I'm, I'm so sorry. I couldn't attend the first section as in, you know. Uh... It's okay, sir. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, Risha, as in, you know, more than happy. As in, you know, it's always good to interact with, uh, you know, with. People with uh, crazy ideas or new ideas, right? It's yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Even I yes. learn a lot in the process. As in, I learn so much interacting startups and a lot of things that I don't know myself, right? Or trying to understand, explore myself better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. It will be my pleasure, sir. Right. So, uh, as in, you know, but you know, what we do is, as in, you know, when you're doing something as a business canvas, doing the business model canvas helps us. Mm. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. It, it, helps, it helps you keep an eye on everything that you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. So, just okay. So, like we are coming to the we managed to cover it. We just got around ten minutes or so. So I'm glad I managed to do that. You very well just... managed to cover all the things and. Uh, very nicely, everything is explained very nicely. Like uh, we are very uh, glad that uh, you <laughs> explained so uh, all the aspects of the business model canvas, business plan, and pitch deck very elaborately in a very short amount of time. We can say that. So right. from so, uh, on, on behalf, so are here, right? So if I can just add a few more points, right? If you don't mind. Sure, sure. Sure. Right. So uh, one of the things, as in, you know. As in, you, know, you will be passing out from the college, right? Uh, with honors, and you're going to go out and join the uh, corporate world, right? Either as an entrepreneur, as or as somebody who's going to help an entrepreneur, as in, in their business, right? Or or probably a big company, right? So once yeah. you know, once you are there, so once you are there, right? So one of the things probably that helps anybody. So something which we actually used to promote a lot during our business is to ask people why, right? You must ask why you're doing something you're doing, right? As in, you know, you know what you're doing, what you're supposed to do, right? Or how you have to do, right? So people actually get, you know, they remain in the what and how section, right? You know, they get an instruction that you have to do something, so you know what you have to do. Then you figure out, you do some brainstorming with your colleagues or yourself, and say, okay, how are you going to answer the problem? And you become a troubleshooter, right? But more than a troubleshooter, you want to be somebody who is a creator and an innovator in your work, right? Because that helps you step up the corporate ladder faster. Right? It's always good to ask why. Why are you doing that you are doing, right? So if somebody tells you that, you know, uh, we need to do a certain process in our on the shop floor. So can you do and implement it, right? So why are we doing this? Good to ask. It's not, not as a challenging tone, but to understand that 
know, how does it help? What is it doing for the business, right? But what it does is, you know, the technocrat in you will become a, a business person faster, right? So this is a challenge we face, right? We were very technical when we were working, right? I worked in a shop floor. So we were so busy with work, right? Okay, fine, how to manage a shop floor and what to do during the early days, right? We never thought about business as such, right? Only when we went to B school after, as in a, I worked for five years before going to B school, then we started asking them, okay, fine. Then I could actually connect. Then I felt that oh, maybe I could have done diff- some few things differently, right? So it helps when you ask about why. And if you guys, if you, if the uh, students here get time, then please, uh, probably you can go and read up uh, this, um, this uh, go and check a YouTube presentation by Simon Sinek, S I M O N S I N E K. He has a wonderful TED talk. I love TED Talks, by the way. So there's a wonderful TED Talk about how a business leader should think. Right? That's what all of you want to become, right? A business leader need not be the CEO of the company, right? A business leader is somebody who's a who's who's bringing change to the business. And so how we how becoming a business leader, right? how to actually start thinking differently, because that's something is in our own hands, right? So probably that will help. Just probably go and check the video as well and keep asking why why you're doing something that you are doing. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your insightful messages. So we have come to the end of the today's session. So once again, I would like to ask the audience if there is any question, any kind of interaction. Otherwise, we'll go to the concluding remarks. Okay, as there is no question from the audience, I would like to request Mr. Gitartho Kalita, Innovation Ambassador, on behalf of Institutions Innovation Council, to give the concluding remarks. Sir, over to you, please. Thank you very much, Ankur, sir. It's a proud moment for the Institution's Innovation Council, Don Bosco College of Engineering and Technology, to conduct the Impact Lecture Series Session 1 today, that is on uh, 31st of May 2022, and share with the participants the topic on business plan development. The broader theme of, for this session was startup. Today's impact lecture session was conducted by Mr. Pankas Borua, who is presently associated as a mentor at Assam Startup. The impact lecture sessions are a unique idea, are a unique idea of Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell, All India Council of Technical Education, to create awareness in the fields of innovation, entrepreneurship, startups, IPR, etc. Today's impact lecture was focused on business model canvas, business plan, and how to make an effective pitch deck. Pankas Barua, sir, defined what an elevator pitch is, and he also mentioned the importance of elevator pitch. He gave some very important examples of a few famous companies like Ola, Amazon, Flipkart, and how their business managed to gain such a huge amount of success by providing a huge value proposition. He said that we have to have clarity and define who our customers are and how uh, he gave uh, he threw light on how to retain them for uh, for as long as possible. He gave importance on key partners, key activities. He focused on the fact that executive summary is the most important section of the document. He talked about the importance of future roadmap. This session was extremely beneficial to the student community, as the speaker, Mr. Pankas Barua, has very well explained about the strategies required for developing a business. The faculties who have attended the session are also benefited as in the present day. Teachers too play an important role in the entrepreneurial ecosystem so as to motivate the young minds to innovate and think out of the box. Don Bosco College of Engineering and Technology, Assam Don Bosco University, is always willing to encourage and handhold the budding entrepreneurs. And likewise, the entire community of our university is benefited by such sessions. I would like to provide my sincere thanks to Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell, All India Council of Technical Education, which is led by Dr. Avaya Jere for their immense contribution financially and morally in conducting the conducting today's session. I would like to provide my sincere thanks to our Honorable Vice Chancellor of our University, Father Stephen Mavli, Pro Vice Chancellor Father Joseph Nalana, Principal Dr. Manoranjan Kalita, Registrar Father Johnny Jose and President IIC, Dr. Ujjal Sharma. I acknowledge the support received from my colleagues, Mr. Ankur Goswami, 
Dr. Mernal Cantisen, Mr. Bricasa Garwal, Mr. Sudip Kalita, and others in successfully conducting the session. Last but not the least, my heartfelt gratitude and thanks to our speaker, Mr. Pankas Borwa, for sparing his valuable time. And we are looking forward to much more interactive sessions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Gitarta. And All the best. I would like I would like to invite Pankaj Borwa, sir, whenever he comes to Guwahati, to Ajarat, you are always welcome to our university. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Nice connecting with all of you.